State Museum and Educational Center. My name is Andrew Tucker. I'm 59 years old. I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. I've been here in Florida for over 16 years. Um, I was first uh, diagnosed with the HIV virus in, of July of 1991 um, through uh, STD, and they were uh, actually uh, testing for the HIV virus at that time, and I found out I was HIV positive. At the time, I was uh, caught up in drug addiction, so I didn't know if I had symptoms or not because uh, I had lost weight anyway. Um, I was walking around uh, having, uh, doing unprotected sex and uh, using, uh, sharing needles. And um, so I, I didn't really know where, where I got the virus from. My first reaction was um, I was in total shock um, and I was in total denial. And I, I went on a suicide mission, I would say, using drugs. You know, I tried to kill myself through the use of drugs, but I wouldn't die. So um, this went on until 1997 when I got clean. And once I got clean, I started to uh, do something about the virus. I started going to a doctor regularly. Um, they suggested that I start taking medication. So I started taking medicine and um, I started to, um, lift up my uh, uh, cell count, because my, my cell count was at, at 100 at one time, really, really low. And uh, when I started taking this medication, it started to get higher and higher. And um, today I can say that my cell count is 899, and, and my viral load is undetectable at this, at this time. Um, when I first heard about the, the, the the widespread of uh, HIV in this uh, county, I was really amazed and um, it was kind of frightening. But I, I used it, I, I realized that it was a harvest where I could share my experience, I could share my hope with other, other individuals and, and tell them that they can live with the virus. It's not a death sentence, it's a life sentence and they can live with, them, live with it through proper care through treatment, through to going to a doc. They said that uh, this was a death sentence. And they also, uh, they had a, a label, they called it GRIDS, gay-related uh, immune deficiency disease. And they figured that everybody that had this disease uh, were gay. So I had that stigma attached to me, even though I wasn't. But I, I kind of, like I said, I lived in denial for a lot of years. And it was really hard for me to tell my family members that I had contacted HIV virus. But sure enough, I told them. And at first they didn't accept it. They didn't accept it for years. I'm talking about my mother, uh, my, my, my siblings, my brothers and sisters. And, and I, when I told them, they, were, they didn't accept it readily right at that moment. It took them years to actually uh, believe that I actually had the virus or accept it. And, and once they accepted it, they, they embraced me with loving arms. You know, and, and, and it was hard for me to disclose um, my status to other people, especially uh, when I started dating. It was hard for me to disclose that information. The reaction was, you should have told me sooner. The reaction was, um, it was okay. Because I thought I would be alone and I thought I would, would die alone because I had the virus. I have two biological sons and I have six children in total with my wife. I have a wife and I've been married coming up on 12 years now. And my wife is HIV negative. It was very, real difficult to actually tell her at first. I think we were dated like four months, but we weren't having uh, unprotected sex. But still, I know that it was in her best interest and it was her right for her to know. So after a period of time, um, I just brought up the subject and, and I told her about it. At first she was in shock, and then she uh, uh, kind of accepted it. I do uh, groups uh, with the clients of the uh, HIV population, and I, I share my experience and my hope with them. Um, 
I've been with this organization for um, coming up on 10 years now. And this organization has saved my life um, through, uh, uh, when I first came here, I was actually, um, they actually did the case management for me. So they, they linked me up with different programs and things like that. And they also gave me a job. I started off here as a maintenance man, a maintenance worker, and I moved my way up. Um, I, I've been to school uh, to be a addictions counselor, um, a HIV educator, um, and, 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 and I just enjoy like helping other people. That's my passion. I am also, um, I have a pen pal ministry where I write individuals that are incarcerated who have who have, who's, who's never, maybe some of them never received letters in the mail from loved ones, anything like that. I would get their names uh, through the prison ministry or through just their relatives and I would write them. And I had this one client who was expressing that he felt so alone because he'd been diagnosed with the HIV virus. And at the time I hadn't broke my status to him. I was, you know, anonymously. And I uh, broke my status and I shared with him that he's not alone, that I was HIV positive too. And that gave him so much hope in knowing that he wasn't alone. HIV is, uh, it, it's, it's reality. It's a dangerous uh, disease. Um, anyone can get infected with it. Um, I would tell them to use protection. And, and I would tell them that uh, this is nothing to play with and that um, there's no cure for this disease and, and, and it's just treatable. And that um, they should always like protect themselves no matter what and not do a lot of at-risk behaviors just because they think they're young. And, and, and I would also tell them that you cannot tell another individual if they have the HIV virus or not just by their appearance alone. Mm -hmm.